Hey, welcome to Beals Science. I'm Craig Beals. I've got this really cool physics toy here that we're going to explore today. And it's called the Gee Ha or the Whammy Diddle or the Gee Ha Whammy Diddle or the Yee Ha. It's got so many different names uh, because it's never really been marketed. In fact, I call this the Genius Stick and I'll, I'll kind of walk you through why. What this is, is just a stick with some bumps and a propeller on the end. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how you can build one of these. I'm gonna show you how to operate one of them. And then we're gonna talk about the physics of what's going on. Now, one more thing about this video. I use this a lot with my students as a toy, as a game, really as fun to spark interest and, and get them thinking creatively and problem solving. I also build a bunch of these and take them to workshops where I work with teachers to, to talk about things like problem solving and allowing your students to figure things out on their own. Well, what is this thing? We've got a stick with a whole bunch of grooves in it. At the end, we've got a nail, and then we've got, we'll call this a propeller. It's just another stick. And then we've got this wand. The reason I call this the genius stick is that if you can get it to spin one direction, you're smart. Oh, look at there, it's spinning. See? If you can get it to spin the other direction, then, ooh, you're brilliant. If you can get it to spin one direction, stop on command and go the other direction, well, then you're a genius. But here's the thing. Nobody comes to the classroom as a genius, but if we teach you some things, if we give you some skills, well, man, then you're on the same level as smart, then brilliant, and then genius. Because I wouldn't consider myself genius, but I'm capable of learning. And so are you, and so are my students. And so looky there, well, I'm at smart level. It'll spin one direction. See if I can get it to go the other way. Oh, it spins the other direction. So now I'm at brilliant level, yay. And then let's see if we can get it to stop in the middle and go the other way. Spinning one direction. I'm gonna ask it nicely because I think it's important to be polite. Genius stick, will you please change directions? Did you see what happened there? Genius stick, will you please change directions? Genius stick, will you please change directions? Now here's the thing. This is where people go nuts because I put this in their hands and tell them, here you go, all you gotta do is get it to change directions. And it becomes really frustrating for them because it doesn't just change directions whenever they want to. Before I completely explain how to do this, see if you can figure it out by watching this in real time. Are you noticing something? Here's what we got going. Let's slow it down a little bit. As I take the wand and rub it across the stick, you can see where my thumb is. It's rubbing against the side of the stick. Now here, look, switch. Now my finger is on the other side of the stick and it starts to go the other direction. Look again, switch. I just moved my thumb over so it's rubbing the side of the stick and watch what happens to the propeller. You see what's going on here? This isn't changing on its own, obviously. We're forcing it to change through some science. It's a little easier to see what's going on. And if you want to learn how to do this, looking from this angle helps. So this is slowed way down. You can see how my thumb is touching the side of the stick as I rub the wand across. It causes the propeller to go one direction. But when this is happening really fast, it's hard to see that I'm just pulling my finger over to touch the other side of the stick, which forces the propeller to go the other direction. Look, we can control this propeller not with our mind, not with our genius, just by which finger is touching the stick. So obviously this is a magic, this is science. How does this work? The physics of this is really simple, but it's tricky to see. So I took one of my lasers and just taped it to the stick so that we could see how this is working. All right, so now I've got my thumb pressing against one side, I've got the laser pointing at the wall and then I slowed it down. Now look what's happening. Instead of going vertically up and down, it's actually rotating slightly one direction because my finger or my thumb is touching the stick. Because on the propeller, that's the big hula hoop is the hole in the propeller here, and my arm is the nail. If it's going up and down, it's just vibrating. But when I press against one side, I add a little bit of torque. I add a little bit of rotational motion to the nail. And because the propeller can move about the nail, the hole is much bigger than the nail, it translates into the propeller. And then when I stop and put my finger on the other side and cause that vibration instead of it going perfectly up and down, I add a little bit of torque, a little bit of rotational motion, look what happens. 
we start to go the other direction. It's all about physics. You want to build one? Here you go. This is everything you need. Just got some simple dowels. I'll put the links to all these down in the description and on my website at bealscience.com if you want to build these. I've got two different ways here. One is the simple way, using just a, an angular file, and the other one's using a router. I'll kind of walk you through both. Most important part here is the nail and the size of the hole that you drill in the propeller. It doesn't matter which diameter nail you buy, the point is the hole in the propeller must be significantly larger than the diameter of the nail. You can see which ones I'm using. You want to build one? Go this route. It works perfectly. But if you have your own stuff at home, you can improvise. Just make sure that the diameter of the hole is significantly larger than the nail so that as you add that vibration, it'll bounce up and down. As you put a thumb or a finger against the stick, it will add some rotational motion, some torque, and cause it to spin. Here's the file. You can do that on your own with the file. Very simple, it's cheap, but it takes a long time. I make a lot of these because I take them to lots of places. I give them to people. And you can see you can churn them out this way. You got a router at home? Hey, you can make a whole bunch of yee-haw, whammy-diddle, hooey, genius sticks, or whatever these things are called. Again, the propeller is probably the most important part because you need to have that hole centered and again, the hole needs to be significantly larger than the diameter of your nail. But other than that, this is a simple build. Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. And you know, if you end up making one of these or you get your hands on one of these, the real fun is to, to give it to somebody else and let them try, let them figure it out, let them sort of explore and try new things. Because after all, to me, that's what science is all about. And really that's what this YouTube channel for me is all about is to inspire people to keep on learning. If you've enjoyed it, hit the subscribe button. I'll keep making more. Maybe hit the like button. Leave me a comment. I love the comments. I try to respond to all the comments as long as their appropriate comments. Come over to BLScience.com and check out more. Click on more of the videos down there. Thank you. Keep on learning.